and this is my soon-to-be son-in-law, Avery, and we both love to cook, but we know there's a lot of people out there who are uncomfortable in the kitchen. They're confused about how to cook healthy food. They think they don't have enough time to cook, so they don't sit down to the table and share a meal with family and friends, and they end up picking up unhealthy food on the run. Well, we are here to change all of that. We're going to show you how to cook quick, healthy, everyday food so that you can be confident in the kitchen and have more memories around the table with the people that you love. You've got this, so let's get started. We have had an amazing time being in Ecuador together. I know, it's been so fun. Wow, what a place. I'm telling you, if you haven't been to Ecuador, come to Ecuador. So we came down here because my daughter, Denica, and my son, in law Avery, have been in Ecuador for two months now. Yeah. And you spend time in Quito, and then they went to a town co called Cotopaxi. And in Cotopaxi, my husband and I went and met them there, and we spent almost a week there and did crazy things like, I mean, climbing big mountains. He climbed a 19,340-something foot mountain with my daughter and my husband. I kind of felt a little bit wimpy that I only got to 16,000 feet. Which is still higher than <laughs> anywhere you can go in the United States. Yeah, I mean, it's still the hardest thing I've ever done. And we want to show you just a little bit of video footage to show you some of the beautiful parts of Cotopaxi, some pictures, some videos showing you all about the things that we've done. And when we come back, we're going to show you how to make some unbelievable spreads and sauces, things that can really take food from like boring to voila. Okay? All right, we'll be right back. So, if you know me, you know that I'm a sauce person. I think you can just use it to take everything to the next level. So sauces and spreads make all the difference. And these are things that you can put out when a group of people come over. Uh, they'll be so amazed. Uh, we're going to go kind of cross-cultural. We're going to do some Ecuadorian dishes. We're going to do an Italian dish. Uh, it's going to be really, really nice. So let's get started. So first is a caponata. Ooh, that just, I just like the sound of that word. <laughs> so if, you, <laughs> if you've been to an Italian restaurant, uh, there's a good chance you've had this and you've spread it on bread and it's really delicious. So this is eggplant, onions, tomatoes, olives, all that good traditional Italian ingredients, all in one spread that you can leave overnight, put it in the fridge, eat it on, eat on it for a week. Yeah. It's amazing. So yeah. let's get started. So yeah. I'm going to have a hot pan. Okay. Oh, of course, always a hot pan. And then... Just so you have some kind of time management skills kind of going on in your head, always put things that are going to take a little bit longer first. All this is kind of going to stew together for probably an hour I can even go, but I don't want to add something like an eggplant before I add onion. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. Eggplant is really soft, it's delicate, it's a little more fragile, where onion is kind of hearty and uh, more firm. So make sure that you're thinking about when you're cooking just those kind of time management skills. Also, if people are coming over, something like that, do this the day before. All the sauces, everything that we're doing today, you can make ahead of time. The flavors come out more the next day, too. That's exactly right. And if you can do it ahead of time, do it. It's just so much easier when you have guests over, when you're trying to come home from work and you're tired. If you've already made it on one day of the week, so much easier. So let's get started. So first, I'm just going to rough chop some garlic. So when I say rough chop, that just means really big chunks. It's going to cook down and reduce, so it really doesn't matter that it's super fine. You can see, it took 15 seconds. That's all I want. That's going to go in with my onions first. So let's put a little olive oil in our hot pan. So about a tablespoon of olive oil in the pan. Looks like you have about a half a cup there, maybe, of That's, onion? Yes, yeah, half a cup of onion and four cloves of garlic. If you've got already minced garlic, do about a tablespoon. You can never really have too much, no, I don't think, so double sure. it if you like it. Yeah. So much of cooking is really your own taste, your own what you like. And in our house, we like lots of garlic. Avery and I both like lots of citrus, so we use those things a lot. Don't be afraid to go off course a little bit when it comes to cooking. This is one way to do it. Try it this way, and then adjust. Make little changes the next time you make it. So then I'm going to add just everything together. So easy. I'm going to add tomatoes, a cup, about a cup of eggplant, 
about six or two tablespoons of olives. Uh, with the olive, you see the rest of these have no pits. If it has a pit, just cut around the edge like so, kind of like an avocado. You can kind of twist, one half will come off, and then you kind of squeeze from the end and the rest will come out. That's really, really nice. I'm also going to chop up some basil. I've got balsamic, wow. and I'm going to add a little bit of water. That's it. So, full recipes are always on thefreshtable.org. Um, yeah, this is really good. So let's put it all in and see what happens. Okay. All right. So this is coming out. Tell me one question. I know that you can like, at least my favorite way to do it is to take some really good, like some Italian bread, slice it, thin, toast it, and then put this on top of it, which would be amazing. Are there any other things, any other ways you suggest that you think you could make like a sandwich with some meats on it and all that too and put this down? Yeah, so like a mufalata, if you ever had that kind of sandwich, you can make something like that where you can put some salami or pepperoni and cheese on it. Uh, traditionally, you just kind of spread it on some bread, but... Yeah, you can also, yeah. I think, put it on top of, or it actually has almost like a, a, a sauce on the side of chicken. I could just so see taking a little bit of some chicken and eating a little bit of this um, coconut with it. All right, so enough about your sauce. Okay. Unless you have anything else you're going to add? Uh, just a cup of water. Okay. Because you want it to cook for a while and you don't want it to dry out. Do so you want to cover water. it? Um, you could cover it, you could not. It's still going to stew either way. Um, Slow cook heat, it. low heat, right? Low heat, Long minimum time. of 30 minutes, um, maximum of about probably an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, if you keep it on low, the longer you cook that, the more flavors that's going to infuse into it. So we're going to move on now to something because I didn't realize that a lot of people really don't know how to cut a mango. So I'm gonna first teach you just some things about a mango, things you never knew about a mango. And um, then I'm gonna also, after I show you a couple things, I'm gonna teach you how to make an amazing mango ginger chutney. So when I have a mango, you can see it's you know shaped like this. I'm gonna cut a little bit off the top and a little bit off the bottom, just to have a little bit of flatness to it. So I cut there and I cut there. And we're in Ecuador, the fruit here just tastes so amazing, I can't even explain it. So once I take that off, now you can see I just cut along the outside like this, and you don't want to waste too much of that mango, so you really try to stay just taking off that outer layer, just like this. Now I'm telling you, this mango is perfect. Um, <clears throat> let me cut a little bit more off, and then one of the first times I ever had just an unbelievable mango experience, I was actually in Mexico, and my two sisters and my mom and I were down there celebrating my mom's 70th birthday. And there was a guy on the beach who was selling mangoes on a stick. And he cut it in such a way that you could like eat it off of almost like a popsicle. And he said to us, okay, now I'm gonna squeeze lime and I'm gonna put some cayenne pepper over the top. And I said, that's okay, I'll just take a little bit of lime. And he says, no, you're gonna take some pepper. And I was like, all right, it just sounded kind of bad. You could do a chili powder or a cayenne. And he did it this way and it was one of the most amazing flavor bursts I've ever had. So, so good. Take these scraps. Thank you. I've got a little bit more right here. So then you just kind of come and get all the rest of that peel off. There you go, Avery. A little something for you. Thank you. Okay, now if you look at the mango, it's a little bit more narrow this way. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little bit more narrow. So that means that my pit runs this way. Okay, so I'm going to take it, hold it at the top, and I can feel a little bit of pressure of where that pit is as I come down it. I flip it around. I'm going to flip it around. It's a slippery in a bubba. Okay, so let me hold on. Come down here. And then you come onto the sides. Did you see how all of that good stuff is coming off and I'm leaving that pit? When right. I cut a mango, <laughs> it just gets juice everywhere and it's a mess. So definitely do it this way so you're not just like getting all the good stuff everywhere. So you can't it's perfect. It. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's like the pit right there. You can hear that? That means there's a pit there. So then, I'm gonna cut it, and if I was going to do it with the lime, and I sometimes do this just in a big bowl, I take it, I cut it into bite-sized pieces, and then I put it into a dish, squeeze some lime, top it with some chili powder, and there we have just this amazing, just like a side dish or something for breakfast. But what I'm gonna do now, instead of just doing that, is I'm gonna go ahead and make a mango chutney out of this. Okay, so I've got little kind of equal-sized pieces all throughout. I'm going to go ahead and put this into my pot. So most people just 
buy chutney in a jar. I mean, that's what I've usually done. Mm -hmm. But with this, you can make it and it lasts in your refrigerator for quite a long time. And tomate usually means less sugar, usually means much better. Yeah, and in my world, it's no sugar. So there we go. So this is ginger root. And what we want to do is just take off the outside, the brown kind of, I guess you'd call it skin of the ginger. And so you take that off, and then I'm going to mince it. I'm going to add one teaspoon of this wonderful ginger flavor. And there's nothing that can really replace it. It's such a unique flavor. And also, ginger is so good for your health. So, you know, eating some ginger, making some tea by just putting some ginger into hot water is wonderful. All right, so I just about have all the brown stuff off the side. Now, mincing it. How about Avery, you want to make about one so. teaspoon for me, okay? Okay. Then I'm taking some lime. Like I told you, mango and lime, they're like a match made in heaven. They just really go together well. So um, there's a little bit of uh, seeds in my lime. So I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze it right through this strainer. And I'm adding one tablespoon, or close to, of fresh squeezed lime juice. And nothing really replaces that fresh squeeze, guys. So go ahead and get some fresh squeezed. And then we'll add one teaspoon of the ginger. And then I'm going to put a couple seasonings and spices in here so that you can get a really kind of a, when you eat a chutney, often you first taste something like the mango, and then you go, ooh, but there's a little bit of ginger in there. And then you taste the tartness of the lime, and then the cinnamon, and so it's a very kind of multi-flavored um, thing, so. If you want to know a real kind of chef trick, uh, as you get more advanced in your cooking, you're going to find that you really want to balance flavors, and you want to have multiple notes kind of hitting in the same bite. So if I have soup and it's really creamy, I maybe want to add a crunchy note on top, something toasted, like a toasted uh, chickpea or something. That kind of balance of flavor is really nice. With this, I want the sweetness of the mango, but maybe a little kick from the ginger, something like that. Absolutely. And so those contrasts of flavors, that is what is really going to put you over the top. So be thinking about that as you experiment with your spices and all that good stuff. Uh, be sure uh, to try to think on the level of Man, are we hitting more than one note? Is it just sweet, or could it be sweet and sour, or sweet and spicy, or uh, just kind of think about that. Yeah. And it, it kind of bums me out because so often in the U.S., especially, and I think in other parts of the world, we are all about the sweetness. Everything yeah. has sugar added into it. And your mouth has so many taste buds, and it got created us to enjoy all these different flavors. And we now have set it up really that we're, we're looking just for that sweet taste. And so everything we eat, we use our sweet taste buds, but we're not doing those savory and the spicy. So that's what I love about a chutney. So this is just a tiny bit here, a little bit of a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. And now this is a cayenne pepper, so it's got some kick to it. So it's not mice, not much that I'm gonna put in. It's again, just a quarter of a teaspoon, okay? Yeah, I like things a little spicier, add some more. Then I'm gonna switch to a little bit more when it comes to the cinnamon, and I'm doing a half a teaspoon of cinnamon right all in there wonderful yeah it smells yeah. so bright and fragrant and fresh and that's the power of like a sauce you can take something bland like a little piece of bread or just a bland sandwich and make it over the top an old piece of bread yeah. i don't know about taking an old piece of bread and making <laughs> it into over the Is top it old? Uh, i thought you said <laughs> an old piece of bread I'm like, you can take an old shoe yeah um Anyway, what you could also do is you could add something like a, a spicy pepper like this, a habanero, a jalapeno, something that will really give it a little bit of kick and crunch. But I'm going to add then just about two tablespoons of water. I'm going to put it on a very low heat and let it cook for a while. So don't forget, all those things you just learned about a mango, you learned them here at the Fresh Table. Yeah. All right. So, so we've got one more we're going to do real quick and then kind of transition the set. So. This is really, really easy, really, really nice. So we're going to make just a creamy avocado sauce. Uh, this is the kind of spread you can put on just about anything, uh, whether it's toast in the morning or kind of like a side dish to go with another one of your soups and stuff. Uh, this is going to be really nice. All right, so why don't you show them how to cut up that avocado? Yeah, so pretty simple. We've just got, what, three ingredients? We've got some Greek yogurt, some lime, avocado, that's it. So take a ripe avocado. Some people say you can tell by the little place where it attaches to the tree that that's how you know it's ripe. You can kind of tell by the feel. Um, you'll get the hang of it. Whatever you do, you're just going to go around the edge like so. Twist. Beautiful. It's nice and soft and creamy. Actually, the avocados down here uh, 
in Ecuador are just like unbelievably creamy and nice. They've been so good. Okay, so we're going to, if you want to add the half a cup of Greek yogurt, I'm okay. going to add one whole avocado. This is such a simple sauce, and it's so much better than just like, I don't think mayonnaise has tons of flavor, and so I think doing something like this has just got so much more to it. So, like we usually say, uh, when you're making something for the first time, make it exactly to the recipe. Uh, the second time, have a lot of fun with it. You could add so much cilantro, you could add more hot peppers, you could really customize this, whatever you like. So yeah, let's squeeze probably a tablespoon of lime juice in there. I have a little cut on my finger and I just squeezed the lime in the last time and I was like, yeah, no, this is going to be Avery's new job. The lime, he's going to be the citrus squeezer for a while until this thing heals. Were you just oh. salt and pepper? Did that hurt? I did not. Yeah, it, it, it hurt from the lime juice of the last oh, time gosh. I did it. but. I'm going to do just a little bit of salt. You can always add more. You can't take it out. So once you're done blending this, you can go ahead and add some more if you want, right? All right. So, so we are going to put this on the blender. You don't need to hear that loud noise. We're going to reset. Oh. Yeah, just one thing. When we're blending, we're going to show you a little bit of video footage from the market we went to. Wait until you see this market in Ecuador. There are so many colors. The, f the smell in there was amazing. We had these juices. So we're going to show you a bunch of stuff from that market. Cool. All right, we'll be right back. Yeah. Okay, you've heard about kids in a candy store. This is so much better than a candy store for Avery and I. There we have like these 100% real juice drinks that we just had made. Look at this. It's really, really amazing. So we're shopping for a show. Uh, for the shows we're going to film here in Ecuador, this is really amazing. You can find just about anything in the whole world, plus a lot of fruits and vegetables you may have never even seen before. So we'll have some of those on there just for fun. Uh, this place is amazing. We love it. You gotta, yes! You gotta be adventurous. They put a raw quail egg in my juice. Not quite sure I'd make it that way at home, but I'm going with it today. Try something crazy. Don't be afraid to cook with different ingredients. We're going to have some fun and you're going to see it, all of this on the show today. on the fresh table before and of course there's a great recipe on the website but we're going to change it up a little bit and instead of the traditional basil and parsley we're going to add arugula. So arugula is really nice. Uh, you can do this with kale as well if you mm -hmm. don't really like your dark leafy greens. Uh, why not mix it with some cheese and oil? It's great. It makes it taste delicious. So this is a baby arugula and we are going to add equivalent of, what do you think? Three cups? No, that's not three, that's about two. That's, you're right, that's two. Okay. So to rip it in half, drop it in. And we'll have the exact amounts on the, web, on the website, so you can always go to thefreshtable.org or Faithful Workouts and sign up for our Faithful and Fit plan. And with that plan, you get access to so many things to help you to get to better health. So I always have to say that, guys, because I want you to be able to access all this. And also, when you do that, it supports us as the, as the ministry. It's a 501c3 because if without your support, we can't continue to be on the air. Thank you for the help that you've given us so far. Excellent. And uh, we're excited about the future. So we have four cloves of garlic, third of a cup Parmesan, quarter cup. This is walnuts, you can do walnuts, pecans, pine nuts. Personally, I don't think you should do pine nuts because they're too expensive. Oh, they're, yeah, crazy expensive. Um, let's do, let's do about two tablespoons of oil. Okay, sounds good to me. Sounds great. You can, you can add some water, but you can always add broth too if you want to. Broth or water is really good because it allows you to not use so much oil. Mm -hmm. uh, it just makes it taste better too. It's not as heavy. Yeah. So a table, tablespoon of water. Here we go. That's all we need. A little bit of salt and pepper. We are going to put this on the blender. That's it. If you need to adjust the flavor or anything, add some more salt and pepper, add a little spice, more garlic. If it's not quite blending enough, add a little more oil. 
So let's put this on the blender and let's show you everything we made. Yeah, and don't leave because you want to stay with us because we're going to show you a lot of different ways that you can use these things that we've just made with the pesto, what it tastes really good on, some options for it, and as well with the chutney, how to make slight little twists to it to get even more flavor. All right, we'll see you in just a moment. Look at this bountiful feast. It may look like a little right here, that's because we're going to put them on a million different things. So let's run through what we made. Okay, this first one is an avocado, remember the avocado with the yogurt and the lime and a little bit of the chili powder? Imagine if you take a piece of toast and you smear that on top and you put some sliced tomatoes, some snap peas, all of that would be so good to have some fresh vegetables or some, even some turkey on it. They're talking about your pesto there. So this pesto is really, really nice. The flavor of the arugula gives it a little bit of peppery spice. It's really, 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 really good. You are going to love this pesto. Try it with something besides basil. You can just see it's just so thick and creamy. Put that on pasta, fish, chicken. Oh my eggs, gosh, anything. <laughs> eggs. I love it but just with some vegetables. Another slightly different twist to this is to use cilantro. And I mean, cilantro with some lime and garlic. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. a great pesto as well. Then caponata. This one is amazing. Again, you'll find this at some of the best Italian restaurants, but it's pretty thick. Uh, you can see it's, we didn't really cut things very small. We just want to leave them kind of whole. That's because when it cooks down, it just gets really soft and good and it is rich and powerful. So you only want to spread a little bit. Uh, I mean, that would last us for a week. You know, it's really, really nice. It last him a week, me maybe a day, just saying. So if you serve this, you could do it with some nice sliced bread all around it on a beautiful oh, yeah. platter. And you could, uh, you know, scoop that right on top of it. Be great. The last one, mango chutney. Ours is pretty spicy. It's pretty just flavorful and packs a punch, but it's so good. You can see this one as well. It's got a little bit of chunkiness to it. That's because I'm gonna put that over, you could even put that on grilled meat, oh, you could yeah. put that on bread, you could put that on so some, much burger. This would be amazing on some brie cheese. Put that mm. over with some brie cheese would be great. And the thing, guys, is uh, with fruit chutneys, there's so many different things you can do. I've done like an apple fig pecan chutney and served it with pork, which has been amazing. You can also add like a little white wine and, and or red wine, really, depending on what fruits you're using and then reduce it and reduce it and it just gets more and more flavorful as you go. So great different things here. And I just wanted to go back to real quickly tell you about something that um, kind of just that I've learned over the last weeks that I've been here in Ecuador. And it's this guys, knowing how to cook can be such a gift. Avery and Denica first stayed in the place that we're filming right now, which is the home of Mabe and Fabe, and it's a ministry called Inca Link. And they house missionaries from all over the place. They pray with them. They sleep 43 people here and regularly cook for them. And Denica and Avery were able to help them in the kitchen because Avery knows how to cook. And then from here, they traveled on and went to a hostel called, out in Cotopaxi called the Secret Garden. And there they helped in the kitchen as well. Avery made some fried fish. And it's such a gift. And I know it's not like for all of us, the things we love to do. But if you just look at his way that really you can serve others, often I like to make a meal and make extra and think about who is it today that could use a meal. And so I just wanted to encourage you. I'm so thankful for, for Avery, and I'm so glad that my daughter married someone like him. You can't imagine just how awesome the things that the two of them are doing together, traveling the world and having an amazing time, but also looking for moments opportunities to share the love of Jesus and you know we, we hear things about the, the younger generation that there can be a little lazy or this or that well I have seen so many great great people in their 20s whose heart is to love others and to tell them about Jesus so thanks Avery yeah well thank thanks. you it's too it's so glad you're part of our family you guys and are the best just you know what guys so take some of these techniques invite people into your home right be thankful when it comes to cooking. Don't think of it like sometimes we do exercise, like a stressful thing. Be glad you can do it. Relax. Enjoy it. Uh, what an amazing thing that we can all share. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much for being part of the Faithful Workouts today. Thanks so much for being part of the Fresh Table today.